off-the-ball runs have always been important both in modern and old-school football. If you're a lover of the game, I'm 100% sure you have come across one of the quotes from the legendary Johan Cruyff. In one quote he states that, when you play a match, it is statistically proven that players actually have the ball 3 minutes on average. So the most important thing is, what do you do during those 87 minutes when you do not have the ball? That is what determines whether you're a good player or not. And in another one he says that, in most scenarios, it isn't the man on the ball who decides where the ball goes, but players without the ball. Their running actions determine the next pass. And man oh man, how true these two quotes are. Off the ball runs are essential when it comes to playing football at a competitive level. The smarter you run without the ball, the more effective you're going to be when the ball reaches your feet, no matter if you're an attacker, a midfielder, a defender or a goalie. It is that simple. So guys, let's go over 4 of those off the ball runs you can pull out as an attacker and create space either for yourself or for your teammates. These really aren't that special or complex, but excellence lies behind simplicity and that's what you want and need to master. Without further ado, let's cut right into the chase. Number 1. Curved Runs Curved running and sprinting makes up a great portion of the high speed distance covered by elite footballers and we can see it in a variety of sprinting actions. However, the two most common game scenarios where curved sprinting is used are during the high press and the offside trap. Let me explain this a bit. First things first, the high press. For all of you that have watched our video on how to smartly structure a high pressing action, you already know that shadow defending and curved runs go hand in hand together. By running straight at your opponent, you're giving away multiple passing options, usually more than two. However, by curving your run, you're simply eliminating a passing option that's behind your back and forcing the opponent to commit the pass you want them to commit, not vice versa. And now you might be asking, but wait, how is this gonna make me a better attacker? Well, if you have watched our video on the high press, you would know that a really good high pressing action can create some really valuable goal scoring opportunities near the attacking third. Then. You can also use curved runs to beat the offside trap. Think of it like this, you're seeing your midfielder preparing for a through ball. Instead of waiting for the pass to happen, you start running earlier to gain momentum, speed and to time yourself properly with the pass. Your options are two. You can either run in a straight line towards the anticipated point of contact with the ball and risk getting offside, or you can delay your run and beat the offside trap by sprinting in a curved motion. Master the second option you will get into far more and better goal scoring opportunities. That's what I call timing. Stop running all over the place like a maniac and start timing yourself properly with a pass. Next up, we have overlapping runs. Everyone has been taught how to perform them, but do you really know their purpose? Okay, let's first break down what an overlapping run really is. This run requires two players. Player A is in possession of the ball and passes it to player B. Once he passes the ball, he then starts making a curved run towards the outside, running behind his teammate's back. This run can be used for two reasons. Number one, to drag away defenders from the player that's in possession of the ball, and number two, to create a 2v1 overload usually on the wing. Both of these share the same purpose, create better goal scoring opportunities either through a cross, a passing combination or a direct shot on goal. Overlapping runs are just great for relieving pressure and loading one side of the pitch. You have to master that run. Alongside overlap runs though, you might as well master another run that is really similar to it, the underlap run. This type of run basically shares the same purpose with the overlap run, but this time the direction of your run changes from an outside curve to an inside curve. And instead of running behind the back of your teammate, you're now running in front of him. Kind of like a 1-2 passing combination performed to break pressure and receive the ball at a better spot to create a goal scoring opportunity or at least get closer to the attacking third. And now, the final of the ball move, reverse runs. This is probably my favorite run. It is a super simple one to execute. However, not many players are using it, especially lower level ones. The good thing about reverse runs is that they can be executed literally anywhere you want on the pitch. You just need to run or move towards one direction and then perform a sudden cut and turn tover towards the opposite direction. What you're basically achieving by executing a reverse run is that you're marking yourself off of your opponent to take your next action without the pressure of space and time. You make your opponent believe that you're going towards a specific direction, but you know that you will turn. Those valuable milliseconds you win on a cognitive level are more than enough to win the advantage. Such a valuable off the ball move you see players at the highest level performing all the time. They are actually using it so much 
that you and I as spectators don't really value it as an effective move. The truth, however, is the exact opposite. That is why I usually suggest my players to perform simple two-step body feints without the ball anytime they can during a drill. Let's say you're doing a passing drill and you're about to receive the ball. A second before receiving the ball, open up your hips, make a small step towards the opposite direction, cut back and turn and execute your next action, whether that's a one-touch layoff or a first touch. Microdose that sudden cut into your training and you will see yourself executing it effortlessly on game days. And since we're talking about repetition-based training, here's another video that you must watch if you want to become a really skillful and unpredictable player. Until the next time guys, have a good one.